watching the world burn watching the world burn january 30th 2024 let's get into it they got a hell of a story for you you know i was just hanging around hiking through the forest and all of a sudden this machine pops out of nowhere and who knew that orwell's time machine was real and he says hop on board man let's go into the future i want to show you what it looks like so you can talk about it in your videos i said well I, yeah i don't know knowing the future man he goes no nah, no nah, come on he says uh, he says hopefully you can avert that future i said all right let's do it i said but only a few people watch my videos you know so we went on and it was the year 2027 and man the united states wasn't the united states no more and uh it took me a couple of days in the future to piece together what had happened well it turns out that the uh nato lost the war in uh in ukraine which i kind of knew that was going to happen way back in 2024 but uh what i didn't realize is that they uh, because they knew that ukraine was going to lose they actually sent nato troops into the western part of ukraine and when they were getting defeated by the russians they started hitting them with uh, mini nukes this was just one aspect of the war that was going on and of course russia at that point retaliated on the, the european countries and hit uh was they did, refrained from hitting the united states because they didn't want an all-out nuclear war but they made a point london don't exist no more man i they hit that one and uh, of course berlin's gone too so i was thinking damn that's and that's just one phase so then what happened was far worse was the a regional war broke out in iran i mean in uh, the middle east because uh, israel attacked hezbollah and they didn't know how heavily armed hezbollah was and so uh the uh and then of course the united states uh you know when when our bases were attacked over there they uh they launched uh on iran sunk two of their ships and then uh, took out some of the iranian leadership and then it was all out war and then uh unfortunately i hate to say it israel and the birthplace of jesus christ ceased to exist iran uh, even though we nuked iran we we hit them first strike because uh, you know when they started launching uh, their rockets at, at israel you know that that was an invitation for us to launch the nukes and uh and that was bad and then china got involved it was just a hell of a mess and i'm surprised there's any people left in the world but i guess it was just a it escalated and then to people when people realized what was happening they were able to cut it off until the so the whole world didn't cease to exist there's still people well there still were people alive in the united states but it wasn't the same in uh, south carolina well you know the united states what happened here was a, it was a multi-pronged attack was the uh the chinese uh, who knew the russians had a bunch of people over here and the iranians had a bunch of people that had come across the border and they activated all those terrorist groups so it just went to chaos in the united states our power stations were taken out our uh, some of our military bases because they didn't they're not well manned you know because we had all our troops overseas uh, they were attacked uh, pretty heavily some of the bases were taken over all those weapons fell in to the uh, 10 million illegal aliens hands and then it was just chaos i mean just the, the cities were burning i mean it was that was just internally that did, that didn't account for the fact that china russia and iran teamed up and they uh they invaded the united states it was like red dawn and the first state they took was south carolina because south carolina was the the biggest proponent of the uh the regional war in uh in uh, iran so uh, they took that first and uh and so what it was kind of wild because these bases now they're actually chinese uh russians and iranians are together and what they're doing is they're stealing all the resources uh, they've got multiple bases around the united they had multiple bases around the united states and they were stealing the resources and then of course they armed the illegal aliens the ones that weren't already armed and they used them as their shock troops uh to uh to quell the uh american people 
and it was uh so but we had a a bunch of groups uh mainly uh preppers and you know uh, uh survivalists uh and they formed together called themselves uh, after the movie red dawn called themselves wolverines and uh of course they were attacking that chinese base uh i say chinese chinese russian iranian base you know a couple of them all around the united states and a lot of them were getting killed unfortunately because uh, the, the, the illegal aliens are a lot better armed. But still, it was resistance. And so the United States hadn't ceased to exist completely. So that was, that was the good news. Uh, but I was sorry to hear so billions of people around the world died. And, uh, you know, there was still starvation. And, of course, the nuclear fallout. You know, a lot of people are still dying from that. But I just wanted to paint you the picture that I got to see with George Orwell because you know I remember back in 2024 when people everybody everywhere was saying nuke Iran nuke Iran and what they didn't understand was Iran's got thousands of of, uh, of missiles tipped with 2,000 pound and 1,000 pound bombs and they're pinpoint accurate and man those those bases we had overseas just ceased to exist along with Israel and, uh, and boy, that, that, was a, that was a rude awakening for the United States. That was the, that was the first exchange of the war, actually, was when they, the, Iran took out all the, all the troops that we had in the Middle East. You know, of course, there was still a land battle that took place. I mean, the, the missiles didn't kill everything, but, you know, there wasn't the people, the, the Americans that were left on those bases, they were no match for a million screaming uh, Arabs that came, come, came across the, the defenses of those bases. They weren't prepared for that. No way, no how. So uh, that was a that wasn't a pretty picture. And unfortunately, most of our ships were sunk. Now we we had the nuclear submarines, but what we didn't know was that the uh, the underwater drone submarine technology had advanced quite a bit. And uh, the other thing that was very interesting was we didn't know that Russia had uh, space-based uh, weapons. So when, and the, by the way, the Minutemen didn't all launch. Uh, those are, missiles were 50 years old. So when some of them came out of the silos, because uh, we did do a land base, try to do a land base strike on Russia, but some of them exploded right out of the right out of the cannon. And then the, the ones that made it to space, those space-based weapons took a bunch of them out. And then before they got to, to Russia, a lot of, because the Russian air defenses were so good, they were able to shoot a lot of those. So Russia pretty much survived intact for the most part i mean some of the nukes got through i think that uh, and moscow's still there but uh, i, I want to say maybe it was saint petersburg that uh that they one got through there i'm not sure uh, anyway it was a it, i just trying to piece together everything that took place and so but i was getting back to those drones so those underwater drones unfortunately they hit some of our nuclear subs before they could launch. So that's why, you know, a lot of the uh, China and Russia and Iran, that's how they managed to survive, uh, you know, the, the whole nuclear exchange. Because when, I, I, who knew they had those drones to take out the submarines? It's a, uh, it was a whole different world back then. But anyway, so it's good to be back in 2024. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, in the future they'll get those Chinese bases off. Now, why did I tell you this story? Well, you know, we got U.S. bases in the Middle East stealing their oil and uh, trading up in Syria. We're training ISIS rebels to fight the Syrian government, just like uh, in the future where the China and Russia and Iran were training the illegal aliens to fight uh, the, uh, the Wolverines in the United States. So uh, I just found uh, the whole thing very, very similar, you know, when you think about it. It's kind of like what goes around comes around and uh the other thing was uh you know I, I nobody ever understood why the united states needed all those bases in the middle east other than to present targets to the uh those militia groups now we did find out later on that iran was providing weapons to those militia groups but they weren't in control they didn't know they were going to attack these U U.S. bases, but who who could blame them? I mean, yeah, it was just like China when they had their base here in the United States. You know, you, who would blame the Americans for attacking the base when it's right here in the United States, right? 
So same thing. I mean, when you got a base right there in Iraq, you know that the Iraqis are going to attack it, especially when they told the United States to get out. Same with Syria. They told the United States to get out. But no, they, they, and why were those bases there? Well, they buried for the corporations so they could steal the oil. Trump, I remember before Trump uh, uh, became, you know, he never became president, but uh, it was uh, it was something else. I mean, at least he, he told it like it was. He says, why do we have troops in Syria to steal the oil? You know, imagine it. I, you know, it's kind of funny because I bet the Americans are looking back on that now that the Chinese, Russians, and Iran are stealing all of our oil from here in the United States. I mean, they don't need it, but, you know, they're, they're, they're taking a lot of our natural resources, or they were in the future, excuse me. They're taking a lot of our natural resources and shipping them back to their countries, you know. So, uh, unbelievable. What goes around comes around, huh? If I think of something else that I saw in the future, I'll, I'll let you know. So, I forgot to talk about what happened to Europe. Man, I, anyway, I, I couldn't piece it all together, but because... Finland, that was where the uh, NATO troops staged out of, and also Sweden. So when Russia, when those mini nukes flew, uh, they were the first to go, man. I mean, that was, and uh, Russia hit them. That was, a, I, that was more or less the beginning of the nuclear conflict in the Ukraine war, okay? It wasn't, it wasn't you know, it's like it was two different wars. You know, you had the one in the Middle East, and then you had the one in Ukraine. And so, uh, so Finland, and boy, I tell you, they... Russia made an example out of them. Whew. I mean, there's there's nothing but a glass parking lot left in Finland or Sweden. Why in the world they, they teamed up with NATO? Why they allowed NATO to stage the troops out of their countries and attack the Russians in Ukraine? They attacked the Russians in Ukraine. You know, it's not like the Russians had come across their border and attacked them. Uh, in fact, uh, there's no evidence that the Russians ever were going to attack them. But uh, when Finland and Sweden decided to well, with all the NATO troops, the United States decided, and of course Germany was there too, uh, when they decided they were going to attack the Russians, and especially when the, the mini nukes started flying, that was the end of them. And that's why uh, that's why I said that, you know, that Britain pretty much was gone too. And uh, Germany, you know, not, so much, not much of Europe actually survived the conflict. And, uh, you know, and there, was, there were a lot of Arabs in the European countries anyway. So a few of them survived and I think that uh, you might as well look at uh, Europe as being the Middle East now. Uh, you know, they, it's, uh, they, it's, uh, from what I understand, what's left is the practice in the Muslim religion. Uh, I don't think there's uh, the Christian churches have been, the, uh, have been torn down for the, well, the ones that didn't go up in the, the nuclear explosions have been torn down. So I just wanted to talk about the fate of Europe, I'll let you know what happened there. So I wanted to give you two stories to add to the video today. First one was I, when I was in the Marine Corps, I was stationed back home, and that was when Ronald Reagan sent uh, all those Marines into Lebanon. I guess it was supposed to be a peacekeeping mission. And tell you how much they trusted the troops, none of them had any ammo, so when that truck loaded with explosives came running through the base, to that barracks and blew up 200 and I want to say it was 267 or something like that Marines they had the, the, the reason it got there was number one they didn't have the proper defenses you know set up with uh, you know tank barriers and things like that number two nobody had any ammo so how they how are they gonna shoot it that's how much they trust even in the 80s that's how much the trust we had in our troops they didn't want to give them bullets so that's the, that's the first story. And what was the result of that bombing? The death of 267 you know, Marines. Well, we could have uh, sent in more troops. Maybe we'd go try to attack uh, Lebanon, you know. Uh, now, we did have a response, I will tell you that. That was back when the battleships were still floating. I don't remember which battleship it was, but that battleship opened up with those big guns in the hill where the Marines were taking sniper fire, they said it disappeared, the ones that I talked to. They'd never seen anything like it. It looked like a nuclear bomb had gone off. So I, we definitely killed a whole bunch of people in Lebanon with that strike from the battleships. So that was Reagan's response. And then his response was to pull the troops out and bring them home. And guess what? To the best of my knowledge, other than probably some CIA operatives, 
I don't know of a single American who's died in Lebanon to this day. So that's, uh, that's the first story. The second story is, why is, what is the reason that we have troops? I already gave you one, that's because we're arming ISIS and sending them against the Syrian government. The other reason is, like Trump said, we're stealing their oil. So let's say that Russia came in, put a base here in the United States, and started pumping oil and sending it back to Russia. Same reason we're in Iraq, my Iraqi story for you. So I'm over there, 2003, we're, we're getting ready to invade, you know, and I'm thinking, all right, we're gonna go, go to Baghdad and get Saddam Hussein. Hell no. All those troops went immediately for the oil fields. They, 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 you know, there were some troops that went towards uh, Baghdad, but most all the troops were there to secure the oil fields. And who profited by that? Halliburton, the oil companies. Same with Syria. Who's over there? Conoco Phillips, the big oil companies. Who's profiting from all these, uh, these military personnel that are getting killed? Corporations. And, of course, a lot of uh, unscrupulous politicians that are lying in their pockets. So I'm just trying to explain to you the nature of the game. You know, we as people, we've got to stand up and tell the government no more, tell the corporations no more. Human life, American lives are worth more than their profits. So I forgot to add to my glimpse of the future. And uh, I, I guess I was just talking about the bases in the Middle East and how quickly they were overrun by, you know, a couple million screaming uh, Arabs. Uh, of course, the Turkey came out on the side of uh, Russia and, uh, and also uh, China. And uh, Pakistan pretty much stayed out of it. And so, well, and, and then India, they uh, they came out of it pretty pretty clean too. You know, there was no nukes there. So that's why I said the whole world didn't didn't go up in flames. But the other part that was the story that I didn't tell was, you know, we have those 400 bases overseas. Uh, so it wasn't just the Middle East. Uh, once China got involved. And Russia, you know, the nuclear exchange of the mini nukes up there in Ukraine, those bases, they were overrun. I'd say it only took like six months or so because the United States couldn't, uh, there was no logistics. They ran out of uh, ammo in a hurry, uh, you know, so it was, uh, so China took over some of our bases and uh, Russia took a couple, Iran took a few. Uh, anyway, it was, a, it was quite a mess. So the U.S. empire, as far as its overseas presence, ceased to exist. So anyway, I just thought I'd tell that part of the story. Forgot about that. Someday, I actually met with the, uh, the people here in Ocala. I came and I showed them this spot. And I want to put a sitting bench right over here. And I want to sit right here. I'm going to bring my own chair one of these days and just sit and read a book with that view right there. I mean, I know this ain't much of an elevation for, you know, in the other states, but here in Florida, this is about the best you're gonna do. And then I can't wait, my charitable foundation, I'm gonna put a picnic table right over there so that people can come in. We'll put it right about there in the shade of that tree so they can stop. This is halfway of a five mile hike and you can just sit there and have a picnic and then continue on your way.
было с расстояния 70 километров, какое-то количество людей находилось ближе одного солдата, находившегося в канаве, засыпало пешком, и один солдат погиб в одном из близлежащих сел. Значит, ну, население было все выведено из зданий.